when you order room service, they ask if you want a cup of coffee or the pot. I think you know what I ordered. Beautiful as it may look, it is freezing outside. Mo, mo, ass, most, mo, mo. Well, good morning, my friends. It is. Uh, it's great to be here. It's, a, it's an evening keynote, which is different than normal. So that means we have the whole morning and day to just shoot some stuff, shoot some additional content, which is great. It's always good when I'm hanging with Tom and, and when I'm traveling, being able to capture some other stuff that's not just, you know, the main keynotes and the main session. So that's what we're doing, walking around, capturing some things, making some things happen. Right now, I'm creating some of my own unique content for different platforms. So, uh, stuff that like you know has captions and fonts and titles and all those kind of things. And a lot of people have asked me in the past, like, what should I post on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram? And, like, should I post the exact same thing all the time? The best answer and the most success that I've found from you know producing content for myself and for clients that we have is simply to just really understand like context to understand that a seven minute vlog on YouTube about video production that vlog doesn't necessarily make sense for LinkedIn or maybe it doesn't even make sense for Twitter it doesn't even make sense for Instagram depending on what I'm talking about it really obviously varies but I don't really think that there should ever be this idea that you create one piece of content and then you use all the platforms as distribution because everybody is so different in those platforms. And so I've really been making it a point over the last year as I've started to do more of this for clients and for myself, I'm really thinking like, does this make sense for that specific audience? Like I only wanna post stuff on LinkedIn that makes sense for a LinkedIn audience. Does it have to do with business? Does it have to do with entrepreneurship or marketing or something that really caters to a LinkedIn audience? Hiring employees or the importance of leadership or something like that. That's gonna resonate much better in a LinkedIn audience than something that's like a behind the scenes of video production or some sort of thing that might be really good on my YouTube channel. So I'm really thinking about in a vlog, if I make like a 10 minute vlog for YouTube, is there something in that vlog that is valuable by itself as a standalone piece on LinkedIn? Well, I wanna create an edit for LinkedIn and LinkedIn only. I don't just wanna hope that people watch the whole 10 minute thing on LinkedIn to get to the two minutes that I think is actually good for a LinkedIn audience. I wanna take all of that and just cut to what I specifically want them to see and put that as its own piece in LinkedIn. A lot of people wanna just like take their YouTube video and share like the YouTube link on LinkedIn just because they wanna get more views on YouTube. But I think you shouldn't really concern yourself with just needing everyone to go to YouTube to watch one specific video just so your views get up. If you get 20 views on YouTube and 20 views on LinkedIn and 20 views on Instagram and 20 views in different spots, it's still 100 views. But people get too caught up in like, I wanna get 100 views on YouTube. So they just want everything to just be shared and have a YouTube link that people have to go to. But it's really important to think about like context and think about posting things natively in those platforms so that you can really have success with the video. And it only can have success if it actually speaks to that audience very naturally. And most importantly, what I'm trying to work really hard on is actually creating content, thinking about topics or thinking about certain things that are just directly to that audience and nothing else. Not just always thinking about like YouTube as the primary place that I go to create content, but thinking about what is a topic I see people talk about a lot? What is something that's really resonated with me in like a LinkedIn environment? And 
let's create a piece of content just specifically for that, or let's create a specific thing just for Instagram or for Twitter, whatever it is. Really thinking about those things and then going just on that topic, making just that video be a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe 30 seconds if I can get it all in that time, and really just going hard after that. Because I think that you get a lot better success when you actually can understand what makes sense specifically to that audience. But try not to be lazy with the way that you think about your, your content because it is important to produce content, but producing content is not simply putting a video on YouTube and hitting share all to all your platforms. It doesn't become contextual to the platform, so it's not gonna get as good reach, and it's just gonna kinda make it seem like you don't really understand how a platform works. So I'm trying to constantly process those things. Hopefully this uh, helps you do the same thing. I miss you, Dad. We are getting ready now, getting all set up. So this is a little mini tripod I've been traveling with. It's very tiny. All right, Scott, where are you gonna sit? For any of the educators here, that you could give them one piece of advice on what it takes to be an incredible principal, what would you say? Are the best assistant principals and, princ and teachers you can, and let them teach. And let them teach. Hire great people, train them well, and get the heck out of their get way. The hell Is that out right? Of their way. There's always like lots of excitement for me when like anything new, like when new quarters star and all that. And not that I really pay any attention to like what did we do Q1, Q2. I'm looking at everything from a long-term game, but I'm just fired up. I've been working on creating tons and tons of content around scaling creative. I think I'm just seeing more than ever just the importance of actually continuing to practice what I preach in terms of creating content around my company. So outside of obviously just my YouTube, it's important that I put out a lot of stuff from Scaling Creative. So I'm just fired up. New podcast launched today. Really, really excited about that. The video version of it is live. People can watch that. I'm creating micro pieces of content around the podcast for LinkedIn and for Instagram and all these different things. Lots of stuff is happening. I'm really excited about it. Big things are coming, baby. Let's do it. I always think it's funny how I've become so accustomed to having a camera with me all the time. That you know how you like check your pockets, and your so you have like your wallet and your phone and your keys and all that. For me, it's like wallet, phone, keys, camera, AirPods. It's like weird. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have a camera like in my hand at all times. Okay, headed down now. What do you got today, Tom? To another session on creating future ready schools. This time, principals throughout Missouri. What was the hardest thing about being a principal? Hardest thing about being a principal is everybody's issue throughout the building is your issue. Principals just go and go nonstop. They're there to support teachers. They're there to remove road, roadblocks. It's an amazingly rewarding position, but at the same time, it's incredibly difficult. So, so it's kind of like being the owner of a company. I, I would say there's a lot of similarities. It is because it, it is on you. You know those successes yeah you might take a, a little bit of the success but you're often giving it to other people rightfully so but at the same time those failures they're on your shoulders there they are Welcome to Philadelphia. The local time is 6.14 p.m. Please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened until the seatbelt sign is turned off. And make sure to keep the eyes clear while carrying on items. Take a moment to check your seat back pocket for any personal items like tablets and cell phones. 